Okay, I think we're almost ready. We'll wait a minute or two, maybe one minute. Just wait one minute, and then we'll get started. Um, today, what we're going to do is look at. Let's see what chapter this is. This is more of chapter eight in Shigley. Uh, so we did power screws and lead screws, uh, and now we're going to look at similar concepts with. Um, threaded fasteners but now the point instead of moving a load or lifting a weight or something like that for that a power screw or a lead screw might do we're going to look at um, threaded fasteners so we're bolting things together uh, so I've got a whole assortment of bolts over here um, and some washers uh, one nut I didn't get a whole bunch of nuts out there we're not really looking at the uh, nut side of things other than they might be on the other side of the fastener they're not always sometimes the uh, bolts go down into a, a hole and the threads are part of that hole um, we're not too concerned with what they're doing just yet um, yeah this is gonna be looks like chapter 8 3 is where we're gonna start um, there are a few bits of material that uh, you need that go back uh, earlier um, mainly table 8 1 and 8 2 which has uh, these tables a lot of tables about uh, bolts so you've got one page that is metric and another page that is uh, UNC or UNF those are coarse and fine thread uh, that have you know the fractional sizes like quarter and thing like that half inch stuff like that um, so let's see before we get into this part let's look a little bit at uh, a couple of things that are in the chapter um, I pulled them up on this PowerPoint so that they're a little easier to see versus um, trying to look at them on the page in my book. Some of them will look at the page in the book, but um, we already had something kind of like this last time, uh, a diagram when we were looking at the Acme screws and at the um, square threads. Um, we had this same type of stuff. Um, in fact, it's all the same. There's one different word here, uh, pitch diameter, where last time we called it mean diameter. It's the same idea though um, the thread angle over here uh, is the same definition it's not necessarily set to the same angle as before um, also they just showed on here that a lot of times that very last thread has a little chamfer on it to help starting the screw into whatever it's going to bolt into um, well we do have to make the difference between screw and bolt um, typically uh, the bolts are going to have uh, more of a hex head, so six-sided head on it, um, and a screw is going to have more of some kind of head like this, where it's a uh, uh, Phillips, this one here with the machine screw, really fine threads, and it's got a countersink head on it, um, bolt over here. This one's a little different. It's got a round head. Um, but the actual holding mechanism is this little square area in here. So this is a carriage bolt. Um, so it's made when you really can't get to the other side even, or maybe you want a nice, uh, you don't want something sticking up, like you don't want a bolt head sticking up on the other side. Uh, and so you have this rounded off part. And so the, what this would do is it would sit into a square hole. Well, the, the hole itself wouldn't be square, but there'd be a square region at the top of it where this uh, carriage would sit in. Um, and that has the the torque resistance when you go to try to tighten this thing down and then you tighten a nut on it. So you don't normally turn this screw, you turn the nut on this one. Um, here's something totally different that we're not talking about. So this would be very coarse thread. Hopefully, I guess we need to know the difference between what coarse thread means and fine thread means. So coarse thread is talking about how spaced the uh, threads are on the uh, screw or the bolt or whatever. So this one would be very coarse thread. This would be like a wood screw, a deck screw or something. Uh, so it would not be what we're talking about today. Um, this one, you can hardly even make out the individual threads on there. They're so close together. This would be a fine thread. Um, here would be a coarse thread bolt. So you can see there's a bigger spacing in the threads. Um, this one's kind of right in that middle zone where is it fine or is it coarse? You'd have to actually measure and see which it falls into. Um, but uh the coarse and fine is talking about the spacing in the threads. So coarse is 
way more like this. Fine is going to be on this, and then there's some kind of in the middle. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go back to our PowerPoint. Um, so the rest of these definitions are things that we already looked at. Major diameter being the very outer part. So this this part over here um, doesn't exist on all the bolts. So this one, you know, it's threaded from one end all the way to the other. So usually a screw is going to have threads from all the way from one end to the other, and a bolt is going to have this shank portion and then some threads. Um, so that's another way you can usually tell. Uh, if you, you're supposed to call it a screw or a bolt. Screw, pretty much always gonna have threads all the way through the end. Bolt, usually is gonna have some kind of shank where there's no threads. Um, and this ratio of threaded part to unthreaded part uh, is usually, uh, you can calculate it or you can look it up or uh, something like that so that you there's a, a set ratio. Because a lot of times you wanna, um, maybe if this thing is in shear, you want the shear part to be on the unthreaded part versus having the shear on the threads because you have know, got all these stress concentrations here on the thread profiles that you wouldn't want to have shear on that. Um, it's usually one of the things you're trying to avoid. Um, I think that's all on this. This is this is a diagram straight from Shikli. Um, let's see what we have here. These are just some general terms. Um, uh, what the unified uh, fine thread and coarse thread. Um, those are the American ones. Uh, metric has M in in uh, its name, metric, and then some number. Um, here's just some general rules for uh, when you might use one or the other. Um, in general, uh, in, in our class, it's going to have, uh, you're told what kind of bolt you're going to use. You're not going to have to guess should you use metric or uh, the UNC or UNF. Um, so you're going to most often be doing some kind of analysis on here's a bolt configuration and you're going to calculate some kind of clamping strength or whatever you're, you're going to calculate stiffness. Today we're going to do stiffness. Um, and the, these just give you a, a reason why you might use a coarse versus a fine or an extra fine even. We don't have those charts in our book. Um, all right, so here's some different names. Hexagon head bolt, so that would be one that has a hex head on it, like this one. Whoops, cover it up, like this one. Um, you can also see that it has all these little markings around the top of it, and I probably have another one that has a different set. Yeah, here's the one that has a different set of markings. Um, those markings are telling you the grade of the bolt, so roughly uh, its strength. More markings usually mean stronger. Um, uh, hex I don't uh, yeah maybe I do have a cap head screw so this next one is a hexagon so it still has the six sides but then a uh, cap screw usually has a thinner head uh, so you can kind of see this one has a thicker head than that one does thickness this way um, I don't know if this one would necessarily make cap screw or not but um, that's uh, one of the differences. Um, another feature on these things that's going to be hard for you to see, but uh, actually you can kind of see it on that one. Um, there's this little ring right around here on the bottom on that one where, well, like this, this isn't a bolt, but uh, there's no ring right here. Um, this is a washer face. So these guys over here are different kinds of washers. Um, and so a lot of bolts not necessarily screws, but bolts will have a washer face where a washer will sit against that face. Um, and that's going to be important for our uh, calculations here in a second uh, as far as is there a washer present or is there not a washer present. Um, and if there is, then uh, you do a certain thing. If there's not, then you might look at that washer face diameter for spreading out. Where's the clamping force coming from? It's coming from under the head, but is there a washer being clamped or what's called in the grip, in the grip of this fastener? Um, or is there some sort of, um, is there some sort of uh, washer in the place or is just the bolt clamping or what, what's being clamped in the grip? Uh, all right. Uh, so I've got a lot of different style of washers here. Uh, of a split washer, this little wavy washer, these just flat washers. Now these flat washers, 
it's going to be you'd almost have to be looking in person but i think you can tell uh just from these two maybe i have another big one let me see if i have another big one Here's one. maybe this will show up so you can kind of see by the reflections inside here and on this outside edge that they look different so these washers are usually made by pressing uh, a die through a sheet of metal uh, you know you don't really go turn these on a lathe or anything like that um, you just punch them out like cookies or whatever um, and so when you do that when you punch them out uh, one side gets a little bit rounded and the other side is more sharp so this would be the sharp side this would be the rounded side so this one was pressed out this way and then this one would have been pressed out this way uh, but if you look at the back side of it then it's got a little bit of sharper edge here so washers believe it or not actually have a orientation of which way they're supposed to go so this rounded side uh, usually is supposed to sit under i don't know if this actually yeah, it does fit on there this is actually too big of a washer for this bolt so they normally fit tighter than that they normally fit more like uh maybe this although this is not a bolt but this one a little bit better fit um, and so the point of the washer is usually to help spread out the clamping force. Um, it is actually part of what gets clamped though, so it's in the grip is what it's called. The grip is all the material that's being squeezed by the uh, bolt and nut. So the nut gets, maybe there's a washer on both sides, maybe there's a washer on only the nut side. Um, you know, who knows? Um, but anyway, we're only going to deal with these flat washers. These other these split washers are usually for when you want to have, or when you don't want it to the nut to back out. So they have this these features that help grip the um, the nut from turning on its own, vibrating loose or something. So usually, when you have some kind of vibration, uh, you would use some one of these split washers here that we kind of grab on and not want to back out. Um, this is just a different style. Uh, there's a lot of different styles of that. All right, let's see what else we have. Um, and so we talked about socket head cap screw um, and then machine screws um, threaded all the way versus having a shank and threads. Um, let's see what else we have. Here are, these are some equations that will tell you um, the ALT. Remember I talked about, let's see if I can get it kind of in the same picture. I talked about a unthreaded portion and a threaded portion. Well, these equations uh, tell you that ratio between threaded and unthreaded. Um, and you have the English set of equations for bolts less than six inches long or greater than six inches. And then you have the uh, metric, same set of uh, type of equations. And then for different lengths of millimeters of how long the bolt is. And so these equations are gonna be useful because they're gonna tell us what percentage, well, how much the uh, threaded versus the unthreaded part of a bolt is going to be. And we'll need to know that because uh, the bolts obviously are going to behave different if they're threaded versus unthreaded. Because in the end, I'm going to tighten that nut down. I'm going to be tightening, I'm going to be tightening a nut down to squeeze some material. And the material does get uh, compressed, but at the same time, that you generate tension in the uh, bolt because as you're tightening this thing down the nuts just not free to move it actually is stretching the portion of the bolt that's in the grip uh, and so you need to know it, are you stretching a unthreaded portion or a threaded portion so that's why you need to know the ratio of where is threaded versus unthreaded so this equation i don't remember their numbers but they're in the book um, at the beginning of section 8.3, let's see if I can find them real quick. Yeah, they're on page 414. These equations are on page 414 in Shigley, 10th edition anyway. Um, here's just some uh, nut uh, names. Uh, we're mainly going to be dealing with these washer-faced ones or either just the regular old regular nut. Um, the washer face here you can kind of see what I was talking about with the washer face on the bolt um, nuts can have that same feature or maybe they don't um, most of the time we're going to be talking about these or either these or these combined with a actual washer 
These are how you might designate. Now you don't necessarily see all of this listed out every time that you see a package of bolts or anything. This would be more what you would see if you had um, like a, a problem statement that's gonna give you every little detail about a bolt. So most of the time you'll just see quarter 20 and you're supposed to know the rest of this part of it. Um, but uh, the rest of this is, is telling you the grade, so how strong is it? Um, the thread series, so is it a fine thread or extra fine or coarse? Um, is it a hex head or one of those carriage bolts? Um, EM, notice there is a little bit of difference here. So the, the US set of designations is gonna be something like quarter 20, so that's diameter and threads per inch. And then uh, metric is gonna be M12 by some other number. So their other number is pitch not threads per inch. So they'll have M12, so that sort of corresponds to the quarter The M tells you that this is talking about 12 millimeters. Um, but then instead of threads per inch, they're gonna have the distance between the threads. Uh, so those 20 and that 1.75 are not quite, they're telling you the same type of information, but not uh, the same exact information. So you have, do have to uh, know what that's telling you. Um, this is one configuration for a, uh, a grip. So the, this is grip length is an important part of what we're gonna do today uh, because it's talking about how much material is being squeezed by the uh, bolt and nut combination. And so this is showing two pieces of material, whatever they might be, uh, the washer. So all this gray material is in the grip. It's all being squeezed together. Um, Normally there's not this much space between the bolt and the uh, hole that it's in, uh, but they're just exaggerating it so you can see it better. Here's another type where there's no nut. In this case, the threads are in this bottom part. This is kind of like a, a pressure vessel or something like that, and you've clamped the lid on top of it. Um, here you can kind of see that washer face underneath the uh, bolt head, and then these little darker gray areas are showing the actual washer uh, cross section. Um, also here, since the threads are um, built into this lighter gray section, the grip L is not all of this bottom part because part of it is actually serving as the nut. So this one you have a different formula for figuring out just exactly how much of this is the grip versus how much of it's serving as the nut since there's not a separate nut. Um, here's, here's the uh, same configuration. I kind of went and out, this is in your book, but I outlined uh, where the bolt is because it kind of is hard to tell. The, this part over here is just showing empty threads. Uh, and then this part is showing the actual bolt. Your book doesn't have the red line on it. I put that on there just so we can kind of see it. Um, this is uh, so you can figure out the effective grip. So how much of this bolt is actually considered to be in the grip or being squeezed, or actually the bolt is being tensioned, um, but the material is being squeezed. And how much of this threaded bolt is serving as like the nut part of a different, uh, like this kind of configuration. Um, here's just a diagram uh, similar to that first one that shows uh, different variables that we're gonna need, length, the grip length, uh, all this kind of stuff. Sometimes you might wanna to refer to that. Um, this is the core of what we're gonna go through mathematically today. And it's this idea called uh, stiffness. So when you have a bolt, let's see, I've got a, a made up one over here. Let's get these out of the way. So I had here, these are just wood. Normally you're bolting metal together. You're not gonna uh, bolt wood together like this uh, in machine design anyway. Um, and so I've got a, now I don't, I didn't have a bolt that would be close enough. This one's actually too long. So this is technically a screw. So it's all right though. And I did put a, a washer under the top and bottom. You can kinda, there it is. Um, normally you may or may not have washers on both sides. Um, you probably normally do have a washer on the nut side, but you don't always have one on the bolt side or vice versa. 
Um, but I put them on bo both sides, uh, particularly because this is pretty soft wood. And so if I clamp down on this too tight, it's going to deform it. Um, but it would do the similar thing with metal, just obviously the metal is going to be more resistive to being the to having localized deformation. Um, but it's not immune to it. Um, and normally you wouldn't have this much sticking out the other side. Um, in fact, let me show you a page in your book that tells you, you know, how much should you have over here. It doesn't tell you how much you should have. It just tells you um, what are your options. So back in the, this isn't in chapter eight, by the way. So you do have to go to look it up. Table A17, this is on 1043 in 10th edition. These are standard sizes uh, or preferred sizes. So um, they're just a whole list if you have inches or metric. Uh, well, metric, I pointed to the decimal inches. Metric or fractions of inches of things that uh, you might expect to find without having to have a custom made bolt. Um, and so it has all of the fractions of inches or the decimals of inches of uh, going in and well, what's the closest length to being able to actually come out the other side of this nut without having all this extra hanging over there and you can go and see um, what your uh, closest lengths are that are standard uh, so you, this is we'll actually run through that uh, in our little problem we're going to analyze something like this in a second um, and so there are sizes that you can expect to find without having to order custom stuff. So um, when I'm squeezing this, you know, tightening the nut uh, on this, normally you are tightening the nut versus turning the screw head. Sometimes you turn the bolt head or a lot of times you just hold the bolt and tighten the nut. Um, so when you do that, whatever you do to tighten it, um, you're squeezing the blue and red materials and you're stretching the bolt and um, back over here your book is talking about this uh, frustrum frustum uh, and basically a frustum is a um, cone that has the top chopped off of it so it's this cone shaped area underneath the bolt head or the washer if there's a washer there um, actually the washer is part of this because it, it too is not doing anything other than being compressed. So it's all the material that's being compressed. Um, and it, you know, if, if I'm tightening over here, I'm not really, if I'm tightening this bolt, I'm not really compressing way over here anywhere. So there's this little zone, I kind of drew it over here, um, where uh, if I'm tightening this bolt together, then there's this zone of material that's being compressed. Um, and that's what this, all of these dimensions here are talking about. Um, and we will need these dimensions because they are, um, in the equations that we're going to use to calculate what we're trying to calculate is basically the effective spring rate of our bolted joint. So the, um, the, the bolt itself is springy, you know, it's just a very, very stiff spring like millions of pounds per inch to stretch it. Um, and it, uh, but, uh, it is, it is a spring. And then the material that I'm clamping is also a spring. The washer is a spring. It's just a very stiff spring because it's very thin. Um, and so I'm trying to calculate an effective spring rate, uh, for the system once I've clamped it all together. And since I know that not all of the material is actually part of that spring, I'm only doing uh, this little area here and so it's, uh, it's not a nice little cylinder it is this cone shaped area and so the equations are a little bit uh, tedious to work through you have to be careful that you don't uh, put some numbers where you don't want them there's lots of uh, capital D lowercase d and so there's a lot of different variables in there you have to get straight um, but that's what we're going to do um, and so this diagram will help you make sure that you've put the right variables where you want to. Um, particularly, there's this lowercase d here. That's, um, it's actually the size of the hole that the bolt is in. But normally you use the shank size of the bolt because they're normally really close. Obviously, they can't be exactly the same because the bolt does have to go into the hole. But um, normally you use the shank size of the 
um, bolt. And then DW, uh, I think a lot of times that's going to, well, D, uppercase D and DW at least are often the same thing. They're not always, but often they are the same thing. Um, this is the washer diameter, but it's not necessarily what the whole diameter of the washer. So, for instance, if for some reason I had this guy and I used one of these giant washers, it won't even really go on there, but if I use one of these giant washers, I'm not getting all the clamping way out here on the edge of the washer if I have this tiny little bolt head over here. Um, I'm not really getting clamping out there. So normally what I use um, is uh, that D, the, the dat or DW, the w effective washer diameter is just one and a half times this shank diameter. So I just normally use that one and a half times the diameter of the shank. Um, here, these now these do have the equation numbers 821, 822. <clears throat> these are some simplified equations. Yes, these are the simplified ones. Um, <clears throat> so you can only use these in specific instances. So these are only good when all of the material that you're clamping is the same material. So um, in our example, it wouldn't work because, uh, well, for one thing I'm using wood, but um, I've got material blue, and material red, maybe those are steel and cast iron i don't know um and then i've got steel washers so un unless the washer the bottom material the top material and the washer on top if there is washers on top and bottom if there are washers on top and bottom if that is all the same material usually steel because the um the bolts are normally going to be steel um if they're all the same material then you can use this equation um, which is much simpler than what we're going to, we're going to do one where it's not all the same material. We're, we're going to get through part of one. That's not all the same material. It's a little, uh, tedious to just keep going on and on with it. But, um, this equation is the same equation, but they've gone in and put in a couple of standard variables. There's that one and a half times D. So basically they've got diameter of the washer, um, in this equation broken out separately. And here they've kind of built it in that, hey, normally we're gonna say the diameter watcher is just one and a half times the hole diameter or the shank diameter. Um, and then they over here, they have alpha equals 30 degrees. That alpha is right here. It's basically the angle of your cone, your frustum. Um, and that's pretty standard for this procedure is that you, you do use 30 degrees. I guess you could use some other number. This book never encourages you to use a different number. Um, and so this equation, 822, it's not so bad. This would give you the member stiffness. So what that would be is the spring rate of all the stuff being clamped, not the bolt, but all the stuff being compressed. Um, it would give you the stiffness of that um, in this one equation. Assuming you're gonna use alpha is 30 degrees, one and a half times the diameter of the shank as the washer face diameter. Um, then you could use this equation and all the same material. So all the same materials being compressed. Um, if you don't have that, then you have to use this equation. Doesn't look so bad, except that every new material, um, has to have its own version of this. So you, you'll end up with a bunch of springs in series. So that's like capacitors in series. Um, and you have to add them all together using, so you don't just add them like, uh, like resistors in series. You don't add them together. You have to one over the, uh, individual spring rates is one over the total combined spring rate. So you do have to use, uh, this type of equation to combine their spring rates. Uh, let's see. I think that's all of what we're going to do here. Let's go into how are we going to actually do that? All right, so this guy, let's let's get our self so we can write. <coughs> I lost my pen. Okay. So I've got 
I'm going to say that the blue material here, I'm going to think I'm going to treat that as steel, if I remember right. Um, yes, I think that's true. The red material, I think I'll treat as cast iron. I don't even know if we'll get to calculating the cast iron part here. Uh, the bolt, and I'm going to assume this is a bolt, even though this is technically a screw. Um, I'm going to put a steel washer under the top and a steel washer under the bottom. This steel washer up against this cast iron is going to give us a little bit of a, a nuisance in a minute if we get that far. Um, I'll at least point it out when we get there if we don't get to solve that part or not. Um, and then blue is going to be steel, red is going to be cast iron. Uh, and we want to figure out what is the stiffness of this bolted joint. And what I want to really know is when I bolt this thing down, you know, there, there, the bolt is in tension, all this washers and material is in compression, and what happens when I apply an external load that's trying to pull red from blue? So I want to pull it apart somehow. Um, so what's going to happen is since the material is being compressed, the bolt's in tension, the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to relieve some of that compression in the uh, bolted joint and the bolt itself is going to only carry some portion of that external load and I want to know what portion that is so that's the whole point of what we're going to do um, and we're going to well I don't know if we'll get all the way to that particular part but we're trying to get uh, this percent that the bolt is going to carry of any new external load after it's all been bolted down um, we're not considering any shear, you know, like shear forces that it might be on the bolt um, in this analysis. Uh, we'll do that, I guess, probably next week. Um, so let's look at what we have. Let's draw a little diagram of just the area that we're interested in. If I can get my pen to write, there it goes. So there's the blue part. There's the red part. Got the bolt in here uh oh actually i put a washer under it and i didn't i drew a little bit of a hex head looking thing over here we do have a washer here and then we have a hex now this one has all this hanging out here we're going to go first and figure out just how much do we have to have back there so those are all the threads now normally on a bolt the threads are going to end somewhere and then i've got a unthreaded portion um and then I've already went and measured some of this. So I'm going to say that uh, this distance is 0 0.765 inches. These are the actual dimensions of this thing, uh, or at least close to them, rounded off to some sort of reasonable number. Um, 0 0.385 inches. I guess I could have made that 0.75, but I didn't. Um, these washers, they have dimension. So you normally go, you're given a specification for this washer. You go back to the back of the book and look up, um, what dimensions. Basically you need to know what thickness this guy is. So this guy ends up being, um, a, a 0 0.065 inches thick washer. Um, this bolt, so the little guy over here there um, it is a quarter 20 oh not quarter not half quarter so that's a quarter inch diameter and 20 inches per uh oh, 20 threads per inch so this is a quarter one fourth uh, and then by some length and we're going to figure out what length it should be here in a second um the one that's actually in here is too long um, so there's also another 0 0.06, is it 6, I think it's 625 actually, I left off a 2 there. Alright, so the first thing, or well, one of the first things you do often is figure out what's your grip. All the material that's being squeezed, so top washer, bottom washer, blue material, and red material all of them being compressed together uh, and you figure out that uh, thickness or grip so the grip for us 
is going to equal, there's two washers, so 2 times 0 0.0625 inches plus the red material, 0 0.385 inches plus the blue material, 0 0.765 inches. We've got to add all that up. Let's see. We can get that all in here. So 2 times 0 0.0625 plus 0.385 plus 0.765 so our grip is 1.275 I think I rounded that to 1.28 just to not have so many decimals when I alright so 1.28 inches so this is where if you weren't sure all of the uh, standard sizes you go to that chart in the back of the book we might have to zoom in on that a little bit to actually see what it's doing. So here are the fractional inches chart. And I need something that is going to be at least 1.28. Um, so here's one and a quarter. That would, or I could look at the decimals, I guess. Um, there's 1.2. That's not going to be enough. So I could do a 1.4 if I'm using fractional sizes. Then I'd have to go up to one and a half. Uh, for the total thickness and so that's kind of how you would use that chart so that would tell us that this bolt gotta go back out the bolt that we're going to use um, ideally so that you don't have all this extra hanging out is one and a half inches long okay so that's that's an easy thing bolt length should be 1.5, but normally you wouldn't write 1.5, you would write one and a half, you'd write the fractional size. So this would be a quarter 20 uh, by one and a half. Um, the 20 is the threads per inch, so later on we'll look at a chart that'll tell us that that is a uh, coarse thread. All right, so we've got our grip. So that's something we need. Our grip length is right there. Um, that variable is going to be L in our equation. Okay, um, let's do one of the simpler parts first. So part of this spring rate is the bolt. So the bolt, you don't have to do the frustum calculations. It's just a cylinder more or less that's part of it's threaded part of it's unthreaded um, now you do have to pay attention that part of the thread so not all the threads are actually in the grips you know you got this part of the threads over here that are not in the grip they're outside of the what they're in the nut and then even some are past the nut probably uh, certainly on ours there's a whole bunch that aren't being contributing to the spring rate so um, uh, there's an equation in your book k is going to be our spring constant stiffness uh, and we're going to have kb so that's for bolt maybe i'll write bolt down here so we don't forget is equal to and then we've got a bunch of areas and links and everything so we got to go through and see what these all mean Okay, so the A's are all areas, and you've got area of the threaded part. So obviously when you cut threads into these things, they have less area there. Um, the area of the unthreaded part, you have modulus of elasticity, and you have LT and LD. These L's are lengths, and they're length of the threaded part in the grip and length of the unthreaded part. All right, so E... Uh, these uh, bolts are steel, so we're just going to use 30 million PSI. Um, you could look that up somewhere. You could, uh, you know, however you're going to find the modulus of elasticity for the material for the bolt. Um, we're just going to use 30 million. Uh, all right, so LD. So this is 
we might even look back at this picture. You can kind of see LD here. Um, I don't remember if I put our equations for, well, that's the, not the one we want. I don't think I put the equations in here for figuring out the, uh, oh, well, I did put this equation. Where did I put it? This one. No, not that one. This one. Uh, these give you, well, these for the uh, non-metric, the English system, give you uh, the length of the threads on the bolt. So that'll be useful. So LD is uh, length of the unthreaded portion of the bolt in the grip. And pretty much all the, well, uh, there's not really a way for the unthreaded port part of the bolt to not be in the grip. Uh, so this is uh, length, let's get this out of the way, of unthreaded well that's threaded or unthreaded so in our big bolt over here that's this part how long is that part all right unthreaded um, so to get that we kind of have to go figure out what is this so lt is going to be the uh, length of the thread, capital LT. So not. So in our picture, LT is the total length of threads. So this is not necessarily in the grip. This is just how much of the bolt has threads on it. And that's when we need this equation. Because it says over here for bolts that are less than six inches which ours was one and a half so it would certainly fall in this first one lt equals uh two times d d's the diameter of the shank of the bolt plus one quarter inch <clears throat> all right so 2d plus a quarter of an inch tacked onto the end so uh that for us is two the diameter of the bolt is a it's a quarter inch bolt so one quarter inch plus add another quarter inch so if we do that math we get uh, 2 times 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 0 0.75 inches so the uh, the threads on our bolt that's in our uh, uh, threaded joint here, uh, bolted joint here, uh, is 0 0.75 inches. Um, so what that tells us is if we know the bolt is one and a half inches long and there are 0 0.75, three quarters of an inch that are threaded, then I must have the remainder of the one and a half inches as unthreaded. So then I can get the length of the unthreaded portion of the bolt equals uh, the bolt length. I don't remember what, uh, I think they just used capital L for that. Minus the threaded portion. Oops, covered it up. There we go. The bolt length uh, L, capital L. So for us, that's right here. So one, I'm going to use decimals here. 1.5 minus 0 0.75, so it equals 0 0.75 inches. Um, so that would be the LD. So that's going to be this variable. So we have LD now. All right, so we need LT. This one, um, is that what we want to do next? Yeah, I guess so. LT, so that's going to be this one is not the same and that's why they have different they have capital lt lowercase lt lowercase lt is the length of the threads but it's only the portion that is actually in the grip so it's only you know this portion up here not all of this down here so to get that i need to know um, my grip length which is just l so that's the grip 
And so that's all the stuff that's being squeezed together minus the, um, the unthreaded portion, which is uh, LD. So for us, the length of our grip, that's, I rounded it off to 1.28, but it's actually 1.275. Yeah, I'm going to, I don't, let's see, what did I write down before? I don't, I think I did use 1.28, but um, it'll be all right. So technically it's 1.275 minus the uh, portion that is threaded or unthreaded rather, uh, which is 0 0.75. So that is 0 0.53, actually I guess it's 0 0.525 inches. So the portion of our bolt that is in the grip and threaded is 0.53. Now these areas, that's what we need next. So uh, here's a little line over here. AD, that is the area of the unthreaded part. You just do the area of a circle. So pi d squared over 4 um, pi these are quarter inch by 20 threads per inch bolts so they're a quarter inch and you just work out that math and you get uh, 0491 I think so that's the uh, area of the unthreaded portion the area of the threaded portions you don't calculate those you look those up so um, we need to go to page 405 so these are in the chapter and they're actually before the uh, chapter on threaded fasteners they're actually in the very beginning of the chapter so you got to go back it always confuses me but there are these tables here so this table is for the metric so that means we need this table which is table 82 on page 405 You've got your size designation. We're on quarter inch, so right here. And then um, I have two sets of numbers over here. I have the coarse and the fine. Um, if you're not sure which one you're using, look at the threads per inch. So quarter by 20 falls into the coarse side of things. Quarter by 28 falls into the fine thread. So quarter, 20, <coughs> AT. Well, it's, it's raining and thundering, so the dogs are have to tell me that. Maybe she'll settle down and Quarter. Quarter 20. AT is 0318 uh, inches squared. So you just look up the area of the thread. So that gets us AD. AT. E, we just, uh, I didn't go look that up. I think we all know the modulus of elasticity for steel by now. Um, maybe you wanted to use 29 million, but uh, uh, this book typically uses 30 million. Um, we have, what else do we have in here? Uh, LT was over here. So that's the length of the threads in the grip. And then LD, the unthreaded portion. So we have all our variables to plug into our bolt stiffness. And we end up with AD uh, 0.0318 inches squared times a. Oh, I actually, whoops. Hmm. Let's start over. AD is 0 0.0491 inches squared. It doesn't matter, you're multiplying them. I just don't want them looking backwards. Um, AT. 0 0.0318 might run out of room inches squared ease the 30 million divide that by AD these you can't mess up or get in the wrong order because you are more multiplying AD times LT not AD times LD all right so there's AD times LT 053 plus um, AT, which is the 0318 times 
uh, LD, which is the 075. Oh, ran out of room. Um, if you do all that math, you're going to get a um, 939213.6 pounds per inch. So you actually end up with, uh, I'll write it over here, 0 0.94 mega pounds per inch, million pounds per inch on that bolt stiffness. And that's not even a terribly high number. All right, for some of these other numbers we're going to get in a second, which we do have time to work on some of them. All right, so that's one part of our um, whole stiffness for this bolted joint. The other parts are the blue part, the red part, and the washers. So let's work on those. So those, we don't have the scenario where all of this being clamped is the same material because we have steel steel and then we have cast iron and then we have steel again um, so we can't use the little bit simpler equation of uh where are they at 822 we can't use that we can't use this um, because we don't have all the same material so we have to use this one all right um, it, it is worth pointing out that bolt stiffness that we just put together, it is not in this, right? These are the, um, the members that are being compressed. The bolt is actually in parallel with all of the members that are being compressed. The bolt's in tension, that's not really the point. It's in parallel with those. The members being compressed are all in series. They're stacked on top of each other. So you don't put the bolt stiffness, when you're combining them all together in the end, you don't put the bolt stiffness in here it has another equation on what we're going to get the uh, uh, what we're going to call the joint stiffness in a second. So um, we're going to use this equation. Let's go ahead and copy that thing down. All right, so we'll copy down the uh, this form of it. And there, there are a lot of uh, little pieces to this one. So you do have to be careful that you're not uh, plugging in the wrong value for one of these diameters. Uh, Got to keep them straight in your head. Or you skip a plus versus a minus sign. That's easy to do. Particularly in the denominator because they look very similar. In fact, I almost did right there. All right, so I copied this guy down. Um, so some numbers in here are based on the idea. What we're doing is we're calculating the stiffness of this shape. So this chopped off cone that has a hole drilled in the middle of it. So this equation is going to give us the stiffness of this shape. Um, and so we have to put in things like uppercase D is the diameter. Uh, let's get all these right. The diameter of the smaller part of the cone. It's not always the top. It's the smaller part. Lowercase D is the diameter of the hole that's drilled in there. And most of the time what we're going to use there is the um, bolt shank diameter. Uh, T over here is how thick is this section of the cone. Now if we go back to our little picture here, you'll notice that sometimes the cone's upside down, sometimes it's right side up. Um, sometimes, like right here, I've got a boundary where I transition from, look, there's only one E in here, only one modulus of elasticity. So this is for one material. And so this part 
pretty much looks exactly like what I drew here. So I just plug the numbers in and solve for this part. Um, this part right in here though, this guy is still, you know, you could, you could turn it this way and now it looks like that, except that um, the top of this frustum here, this bigger one, is actually it starts out as steel because this washer's in there. Then it goes to cast iron. Then it goes back to steel. So I have to do this this piece in three different sections. I have to technically, I don't know if we'll actually get to this or not, but technically you would put the steel washer as its own tiny, very thin little piece, and it would have a ridiculously high stiffness because it's so thin. Um, remember, we're basically calculating the spring rate of these things. Um, cast iron for this section right here and then this section would be steel so I'd have to do three different pieces here on this top one I'm actually since this washer is steel and this part is steel you know or wooden steel then uh, I can combine those together because they're the same material so they have the same modulus of elasticity so I can combine them together so I can use one of these that gets us from the washer down to this part where it flips over. Oh, I didn't even tell you this. So where it flips over, it flips over from one cone to the mirror image of that cone at L over two, so half of your grip length. So remember we had the 1.28 uh, grip, that's another reason I rounded it to 1.28 so that I didn't have the half of a 1.275 or whatever and make it even weirder numbers um, so it flips over at half of your grip so and that that half doesn't always land on a material transition in this case it lands in the middle of our steel or blue material um, <clears throat> so let's see what we can get here so if if we're basically for this first set we're doing the uh, the blue so we're doing this top part, including the washer, since it's also steel. Maybe I could have colored it blue. Then the thickness is gonna be 1.28, our grip, over two. So that'll be all the places we have T, we can put in 1.28 over two, which is 0.64, I guess. Yes. Our diameter here, D, that's technically it's the size of the hole that's in the frustum, but um, we're going to use the size of the shank for our bolt, um, which would be, uh, we said it was a quarter 20, so that is 0 0.25 inches. So that's a quarter 20 bolt. And then this D, um, this is uh, assuming there is something that's distributing the, the uh, pressure from underneath the bolt head, if there's a washer face or whatever. If there's a washer face, then you just use the diameter of the washer face. We actually have a washer. Um, and so we're gonna use the approximation that it's clamping is 1.5 times whatever the whole diameter or the shank diameter is. So 1.5 times 0 0.25 inches. So our uppercase D is gonna be 0 0.375 inches. So we'll just take our uppercase D, lowercase d, T, we'll use our modulus of elasticity as um, 30 million again. And then we'll plug in all our values. Um, this is a natural log in here, so we do have a natural log to calculate. So let's plug in. Let's see. If we'll, yeah, we're still good on time. This is a unit list. This is just part of um, uh, a trig function for calculating the geometry here. So it's just evaluated some cosine or something. There's the whole diameter, so that's the quarter inch. This 
there's the thickness. So this first one's not so bad. It's just half of the grip. So that was the 0.64. It does inches on there. Um, plus the um, basically the smaller part of the cone, the smaller diameter of the cone. Um, in our case, it is the one and a half times the whole diameter. So that was our 0.375 number. Um, minus the whole diameter, that's the 0.25 number, times D plus D. So 0 0.375 uh, plus 0 0.25. Those are inches, just trying to squeeze it all in there. That's the numerator for this natural log. And then we'll have the denominator. It looks very similar, so this is where you have to concentrate and not... Oops, see, already messing up. Um, plus. And then here we have minus and plus, so this is a plus one. And then here, these flip from positive to negative, so 0 0.375 inches minus 0.25 inches. So you evaluate all of that. Um, and you get, I already did this one somewhere if I can find where I wrote it. Um, let's see. Is this it? Yeah, I think this is it. All right, so it is um, one, three, six, oh, four, six, six, seven pounds per inch. So that would give us, oh, wait, no, that's, that's not it. That's the numerator. Um, divided by 1.1529. Um, the, the denominator units cancel out. You end up with uh, inches squared over inches squared. So there's no units in the, the bottom. The, you know, only the units come from here for uh, PS pounds per square inch times inch. So you end up with pounds per inch. Um, so our actual stiffness concentration or stiffness coefficient for the steel part of our bolted joint is 11,800,387.7 pounds per inch. So you might shorten that to 11.8 megapounds per inch. So pretty big number. That would be um, when we go to add these together, you know, like this, Maybe that's K1. Okay, I think we have enough time to do one more piece. Um, let's see, let's do, let's do the cast iron. Let's just do the green piece here. All right, so this one, uh, same equation, but we have to make some changes here because this frustum is gonna be a little different. So we've got, it looks like this. Now, first thing we notice is that it's it's still in the steel. It remains in the steel section. So E E is going to be 30 million again. Um, in our cast iron section down here, uh, we would have a different value for E, which would be you know 11 point whatever whatever number that is. Uh, I don't think we'll get to yet, but it's 11.3 or something times 10 to the six psi. Um, now we do have to be careful. D is not, a lot of people want to just put the top because that's a lot easier to figure out sometimes, um, but it's not the top here. D is, let's write it in green like I did the others. I'm talking about uppercase D. So we got to figure that out. We got to figure out what's the diameter right across there. So I have to do some trig to figure that out. Um, lowercase D stays the same. Uh, it's just the whole diameter, so that's no different. Um, the thickness, we got to figure that out. Uh, that's not too bad because, um, remember way back early on when we first started this, we said that um, the um, wooden, uh, the blue part, the part we've been using as steel, has a uh, total thickness of 0.765 
and then we tack on that guy, the washer. So 0.765 plus, oops, I did a minus. Uh, 0.765 plus our washer thickness, 0.0625. Um, so from the bottom of the bolt head, so the top of the washer, down to the bottom of the wooden material is 0.8275 inches. And we just took care of 0.64 of those inches, so minus 0.64. So the remainder, so basically the thickness, we just calculated the uh, 0.8275 would be from here all the way down to here. We just subtracted off that part, and now we're left with just the thickness of the green, 0.1875. So T equals 0 0.1875 inches. So that's not so bad. Um, we just got to figure out this uh, D that we're going to put into our equation up here. We use the same equation, but with different variables. Well, actually with just that one different variable. All right, so to figure that out, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go back over here and we know that from the top of this washer where the compression starts to here, is half of our grip, so that's the 0.64 inches. So we know that. So let's make us a little diagram here. I'm not going to try and do it in 3D. <clears throat> 0 0.64 inches. Okay, we're interested in that diameter. So D is that line right there. We're interested in that. Um, we also know that this size is the you know the bottom of this frustum, um, which we've been using 1.5 times d. So already well, I did that right here. 1.5 times d is 0.375, and we do know that there's a hole through the middle of this. I'll just draw it, but it's not important for what we're trying to do right now. Um, the other thing that we know is that uh, we have assumed that this angle is 30 degrees. And we did that um, just as that's the standard. I kind of wrote it over, over here also. Um, that's the standard assumption when you're doing this thing is that this total angle is 60 degrees. So it gives half of it on either side. So if we know that and we know some of these other dimensions, then now we can start to do a little bit of trig and figure out, um, you know, what is, basically I want to know, let's see, I'm running out of, it's getting crowded. I'm going to break this into these pieces. We'll call this one X. This would also be X. And we just found this one as capital D. So if we, we know capital D, if we just figure out these X's, which are the same, then we can add it all together and that will be this value. So maybe I'll put a D1 on there to make that not that one. So, all right, just enough time. What we need to do is um, figure out this height and uh, go from there. So that height going back to here is our washer plus the red section remember the red was on bottom so 0.385 plus the washer thickness 0 0.0625 4475 so this guy is 0 0.4475 inches so I know that height that angle, I can use some uh, trig to figure out x. So I, I have opposite of this angle, adjacent of this angle, so that's a tangent. Tangent of alpha equals opposite over adjacent. Uh, so tangent of alpha is that alpha is 30 degrees. Opposite side is x. Adjacent side is 0.4475. Solve for x and write it, squeeze it in down here. 
Um, let's see, what did it equal? 0.2584 inches. So I have two of those, 0.2854 times two, there's one here and one here, plus the uh, this piece, the 0.375. And I get this value is 0 0.9458 inches all the way across there. So that is this length right here. All right. Once you have that, then it's just a matter of K2, if that's what you want to call this section. So this would be uh, K1, K2. We'd eventually get to K3, and then we'd actually have K4 because we have to do the similar thing here because this is cast iron, that's steel. You can't just combine those together. Uh, so technically, we would have to put that steel as its own little section. Um, so K2 would equal, uh, I think I'll write this one out, and then that's probably all we're going to do today. Um, e, it's still in the blue section, which we called steel, so it would have the 30 million. And this D, the lowercase d, doesn't ever really change. You have the same size bolt through the whole, all of the sections, so... Um, you would have the uh, 0.25 there. And then over here, you'd have natural log of 1.155 times T. That thickness is the 0.1875 uh, plus the D value 0.9458. Um, minus 0.25 and then 0 0.9458 plus 0 0.25 and then 1.155 times 0 0.1875 inches plus 0 0.9458 inches uh, plus 0 0.25 0 0.9458 inches minus 0 0.25. Do all of that, and you get a number that maybe looks like it's too big, but you get, um, I think it's 113.8 mega pounds per inch. That seems huge compared to the other numbers. Um, but it's because it is a relatively stiff material steel, um, and it's thin. So it's not very, it doesn't have a lot of uh, room to even be springy because it's pretty thin. Um, if you did this washer down here, which is steel and very thin, um, it's going to have probably even higher number than this one. Um, so don't be surprised sometimes when you get these huge numbers on these spring constants. So you would go in and um, show you what you would do next. We won't have time to actually do it. Um, you would go in, you would do the same thing for cast iron. This one would look very similar to the one we just did. Um, D here, you'd have to do a similar approach because you do have to consider this washer here is a different material. So you have to have this, find this D, which is not quite the same. It's very similar to the same number. It's not quite the same as the one that on the little steel washer. Um, get that, you'd have to change E basically would be the, uh, 11.3 times 10 to the 6 or whatever number it's going to be for uh, cast iron. I think I have it here. Let's see. 14.5. Um, uh, That's what it's going to be. 14.5 is the times 10 to the 6. PSI is the modulus of elasticity for the cast iron. Um, then once you get all of those, so you get all of the values for... Um, K, all the different Ks. So 1 over the whole member stiffness, so all of the clamped parts together, washer, blue, red, washer, all together, would equal 1 over, uh, what, wait, 1 over, I wrote it this way, 1 over K1 plus 1 over K2 plus 1 over K3 
plus 1 over K4. We just did K1 and K2, so the, the upper steel, the lower steel, this would be the cast iron, this would be the washer on the bottom. And you get that. We already did KB, uh, that's the bolt stiffness. This one's the member stiffness. Um, what we're trying to get to is the joint stiffness, so the combination of these things. So the joint stiffness is equal to C, is its capital C is its variable. The bolt stiffness over the bolt stiffness plus the member stiffness. So that looks like a really simple equation. It's just a percent, basically. Um, it comes out as decimal. You don't multiply it times 100%. Um, but it's just the fractional part that the bolt is holding of any external load that gets applied to your bolted joint. Um, and so it's going to come out in the range of 20% or something like that. So this number will be somewhere around 0.2. Um, it's what you normally want it to be. You normally want the bolt. When I apply, I clamp everything down and then I apply an external load to try to pull these parts apart or pu push them apart, whatever I'm doing to get them apart. Um, you want the bolt to be carrying about 20% of that load, that new external load on top of all the clamping forces. Okay, um, I'll, we should still have a web work problem for this. I'll upload it. Keep working on the um, shaft web works, and uh, we'll come back next week and do a little bit more on the bolted joints. Uh, thank you.